Hi, thanks for watching my video. I'm new to YouTube, so I'd really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. Okay, so I wanted to have a timber slick to use when I'm building uh, various projects. A couple times I've needed something like this and ended up making do with just a chisel. I found that when I went looking uh, to buy one, they're quite expensive. Uh, for a half decent one, you're looking at a minimum of 200 bucks. Uh, and that's fine if that's what you need, uh, but I don't need anything that fancy. And I like making things myself, so here we go. What I did is I ordered this chisel you can see here from Amazon. Uh, I've got the link in the description below. My plan is to take it apart and add a longer handle. I'm going to change the angle of attack and use it that way. Uh, a poor man slick is what we're going to be building here today. The handle is just an old one I had kicking around the garage. Uh, I'm not even sure what it came off of. I'm assuming it was on an axe at some point. Um, it was in the house when I bought it, so uh, if it's not split too far up the handle, I'm going to use it as it is. Um, it seems nice and solid. I think it's hickory, uh, not really sure, um, but it'll make a nice solid handle. So the first step here, you can see me, uh, I'm wailing away at the thing just to get the old handle off. I picked this chisel for three reasons. Uh, one, it has the right width blade. Uh, this is two inches wide. I thought something in the two to three inches would work for the, uh, the, the projects I'm doing. Um, it has a big enough blade that I can put my hand on it when I'm using it and kind of push down and keep it straight. I would rather actually have a longer blade uh, section, maybe something, uh, I don't know, six inches long maybe. Uh, but I couldn't find anything when I was looking and I was in a rush to get this going. Uh, I'm sure they exist and maybe someday I'll build one with a, a bigger blade. Um, and the third reason is I wanted the longest tang possible so I can get uh, as much of it into the new handle as I can. Get, as I can. Uh, this one, as you can see, is a full tang chisel. It goes right to the end and it actually has a nice strike plate on it. It's a pretty nice chisel in and of itself. Um, like I say, there's a link uh, in the description if, if you want to take a look at it. Anyway, I digress. So here I am pounding on the handle to take it apart. Yay, success! You can see here it's got a nice strong tang that's quite long. It should support it well in the new handle. It has some nice grooves and knobs on the tang itself that will help grab the epoxy that's going to hold it into the new handle. Now let's get the handle and see what we've got there. First, I need to get a rough idea of the length that I want it to be. Being a used and abused handle, this is partially going to be dictated by where and how many cracks are in the handle. If the solid part doesn't give me a long enough handle, I'll have to find something else to use. This is the first cut and is mainly just to see what's going on inside the handle. Uh, you can see here it's a little longer than I would really want it to be. Um, but I was basically just checking out the, uh, uh, the, the amount of cracks that were in it. You can see it's pretty split up at this point, which is what I was expecting. Now we'll just start taking off pieces until I get the solid wood. Um, it's not very scientific, I know, but when you're working with garage scraps, it's what you have to do. Uh, with any luck, I'll end up with a piece long enough to use. Finally here with my third cut, you can see I had one little piece chipped off the edge. That does not really matter as that section is going to be sanded away anyway. Uh, it has to match up with the chisel tang end once I get it inserted. So I'm going to take the handle at this length and uh, go with it. Now I've got to bend the chisel uh, to allow it to be used as a slick. Normally chisels are generally straight so you can go straight into the material as you use them. Slicks are at an angle so that the handle doesn't hit the workpiece as you use it on large timbers or in shipbuilding. It's a different way of using the tool uh, altogether, really. 
To do this, I'm going to heat it up and bend it. It's not very complicated, um, but it's a little, it can be a little tricky. You can see the color of the metal change as I heat it. I decided not to temper this afterwards. Anybody who does metal work, feel free to tell me in the comments section if you agree or not. My thinking was, since the cutting edge never gets too hot, I don't need to worry too much about the temper. It's not going to be a prying tool or anything, it's just going to be pushed by hand power. With a slick, you don't even bang on the end of it. The force is all done with your body and your arms. So here's my first bend attempt. I took the bend in stages as I wasn't sure what it should look like. I was just aiming for something that didn't strike the workpiece and felt good when I was using it. All right, so here's my first attempt at the angle. When I looked at it with the handle, it wasn't quite enough, so I needed to heat it up again. Uh, you can see I'm struggling a bit here with the uh, uh, putting it back in the vise. It's hot and I don't seem to be smart enough to use the hand with the welding glove. I eventually figure it out though. <laughs> Here's my second attempt at the bend. It turned out looking pretty good, as you'll see, and this is where I stopped. I basically just eyeballed it to see if I thought it would work well with the handle. I never measured a real slick to see where it's supposed to be, but this seems fine to me. Um, I took it off camera and quenched it in, in uh, cold water after the last bend. I think this will bring it back to good enough hardness uh, for a hand tool that will see some pretty limited forces applied to it. I'm using some flap discs in the grinder to clean it up. This is just for looks at this point, although a little bit later here I'm going to actually do a tiny bit of sharpening with the flap discs. Um, the chisel is just as it came from the factory and not super sharp. Um, my only concern here is to be uh, careful not to overheat the tip. As you know, it's pretty easy to heat the tip um, since it's so fine and you, then you lose your, temp your temper in the tip and it makes it uh, uh, difficult to sharpen and hold an edge on it. So I'm switching to a finer disc here. Again, I'm just cleaning it up and polishing it up a bit. There are lots of videos of people building tools, such as Slicks and other ones, who really build works of art. Um, I'm in awe watching some of them. Uh, this, it, this tool is meant to be just kind of the, the quicky slicky, if you will. It's going to be a tool I'm going to use uh, quite often and uh, 
I, I don't really need it to be perfect. Um, you can see here, I, I don't polish it any more than this. It would be pretty easy to take that to a mirror finish if you want it, um, but uh, this isn't a, a showpiece tool. This is going to be a use in the, in the woods tool. Now we've got to get the handle to match up with the new blade. So let's start by uh, cleaning it up. It's got some dings and bangs in it. I'm going to round off the end uh, so when I'm pushing on it by hand it will be comfortable. As I mentioned, I'm pretty sure this was on an axe before. So the end of the handle is just basically squared off. It would have been pretty uncomfortable against the palm of your hand uh, as you worked with it uh, for any length of time. Uh, then I'm going to just uh, sand the finish off the rest of it. Um, anywhere there's a, there's a ding or a dent, I'll, I'll work on that a bit more, but it's basically just taking the finish off. As I said, uh, the goal here is just to make it comfortable in my hand. Uh, with this nice wood, you could really make this look super sharp if you wanted to, but I was just going for a quick functional approach. So I want to make sure that the drill bit I chose uh, is going to be a good enough size and nice and tight, um, leaving some room to get some epoxy in and around the tang. Uh, as you can see, this, this one works just about perfectly, um, which is great. It's the first one I picked out of the, the drill box. Uh, the tang has a bit of a hex shape to it, uh, so there's lots of room for the epoxy to get around it. I'm just going to drill the handle. Uh, once again, following the quickie slicky rules here, I could have lined this up in a drill press, but it's really not needed here. Uh, th this actually turned out to be just about perfectly straight in, um, so it just goes to show you uh, doing it by hand is just fine a lot of times. Uh, this, this project uh, is happening in my extraordinarily messy garage. Uh, I've got at least 14 different projects on the go in here right now. So I apologize for the mess, but it is what it is. So now that I have the tang in there, I'm just marking it uh, where the handle needs to match up with the tang end. Uh, so again, there's probably a lot nicer ways to do this. Uh, you know, if I had a lathe, that might be something you consider here. Uh, but for what I'm doing, I'm just taking, taking a 40 grit uh, disc, flap disc, and uh, going at it until I've got the shape down to the line I drew. Um, I'm also going to try putting a little groove in around it. Um, my plan is to reinforce the handle with a bit of wire wrap. I was going to use some 14 gauge copper wire I thought might look nice. Uh, I did try that, and it did look nice, uh, but the copper wasn't strong enough and ended up uh, snapping under the force I put on it tightening it on. Uh, so I switched to some 18 gauge stainless wire. Uh, you'll see it in the end shots. If 
you have watched any of my other videos, you've probably already met Ranger. He's my beagle. Uh, you'll see him in and around uh, my, my videos, pretty much whatever I'm up to. Uh, he, he takes a pretty keen interest in whatever I'm doing, as you can see. Um, and uh, I'm not sure why, but the noise from the tools doesn't seem to bother him at all. So. As you can see, for an epoxy, I'm just using PL Premium Construction Adhesive, a uh, single uh, part epoxy. Uh, I've used it for things like this before. Uh, it takes a while to cure, especially down in a hole like this, but it works just fine. Uh, it's, it's quite strong and uh, yeah, I, I like it. I like using it. If for some reason it doesn't work, I can always redo it with a two-part epoxy that will cure much faster and, uh, and, and, and work just fine. Uh, this will probably continue curing till spring way down in the bottom of the hole, but that's all right. It's, it, I've used it already um, since I shot this video and it's holding up just fine, so I don't anticipate any problems. Here we go, final time in. I wish I'd put a squirt of PL Premium down the hole before I push this in as well. I'm sure it's fine, but it would have eased my mind knowing some got forced up around the tang from the bottom of the hole. Oh well, next time. You can see I wrap both the blade and the handle with some electrical tape to keep the epoxy off. Later, when I'm doing the finish on the handle, I'll take the tape off the handle part, but I'll leave it on the blade until we're done. Okay, that's it. My garage isn't heated, so I took it inside and I stuck it in front of the heat pump for a day to firm it up uh, a bit before I started doing the finish. Um, jumping ahead a bit, uh, after the finish was on, I, um, I stuck it in front of the heat pump for about a week or so before I did anything else with it, and I let the finish really harden and the PL to cure some more. Let's put the finish on. I'm using a wipe-on polyurethane product. Uh, I'm using this for a couple of reasons. Uh, the main one is, I had it. <laughs> the second is, the last time I used it, I didn't quite get the cover on properly, and I didn't realize this until a couple days ago. Uh, and I noticed it started to dry out a bit. Uh, it's usually a little more liquidy than this. It's still fine, but I want to use it up. Uh, it's a nice, easy product to use that's fine for indoor wood only. But the amount this is going to be outside won't be an issue. I'm a fine weather wimp when it comes to working outside. You can actually make a wipe on polyurethane product yourself instead of buying it. Uh, it's basically just equal amounts of regu regular polyurethane finish. Uh, it has to be oil based, not water based. And uh, mineral spirits. So 50 50 polyurethane and mineral spirits. Um, I'll, I'll try that next time. I did three coats. Uh, I left it about five hours between the first and second coats and the third coat was done the next day. It's a nice easy product to use if you're doing anything interior based. Uh, since it's so thin, it dries fast. Uh, that helps keep the dust bugs and runs at bay. That's the main benefit to the white bomb poly versus the regular. In this shot, you can see the wire clamp I was talking about. It went on all right and seems to be okay. Worst case, if it doesn't stay in place, I'll have a funny little groove there. <laughs> uh, I sharpened the blade on a stone after all this and it took a nice edge. I'm really happy with how this turned out. For just a basic cheap chisel, it turned out to have an okay blade. I tried it on a log after I shot this and it worked really well. So that's my quickie slicky. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. I'm brand new to YouTube and I uh, need to get some subscribers. Thanks everybody. Bye.